Hey, what's up, guys? So today I am going to go over the week in a life of a cybersecurity analyst. Let's get to it. So most of the time, the main issue that I hear a lot of people talk about whenever they want to get into the IT industry or the cybersecurity industry in general, when they call me, they're like, Albert, what do you do on a day to day? Like people talk about IT. Like, what do you do like on a day to day? Because, of course, people will tell them that, hey, learn this, learn that, learn this, learn that. I totally get it, right? It's great for you to learn all these extra tools that you're talking about. But then when people ask you, what do you do? It means they do not know what you literally do as a cybersecurity analyst. They're going in blind. They're learning all these tools, but then they do not understand what they'll be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And it becomes difficult because when they're done learning and they come in as a beginner and the uh, uh, recruiter calls them and asks them, hey, on a day-to-day, -day, can you walk me through your process? It becomes very difficult for them to do that, okay? So today I am going to go over uh, not a day but a week in life of what i do as a cybersecurity analyst so on a monday normally i tend to start work depending on whatever project that i'm working on i tend to start work around let's say around eight o'clock or nine o'clock because now i have to drop off my son so i would say about nine o'clock so on nine o'clock when i start working i would have from nine o'clock to let's say 10 59 or 11 o'clock if i put it that way for me to either check emails check if we have any sort of alerts that came in and then the reason why i say that is because at 11 we have our team meeting all right so we have a team meeting at 11 and that normally lasts about an hour kind of like going over what you did the week prior what you're doing you know this week and it's not really something that's crazy where they're on your neck on, on any of those stuff because whatever you told them the week prior if you were not able to finish it it's totally fine just let us know that okay why weren't you able to finish it you know what happened what were some of the impediments that you were facing that caused you not to be able to finish that you know project that you were talking about last week so you go over that and that's pretty much it so normally let me give you kind of like a typical example so let's Let's say the week prior i was working on upgrading our wordpress right or i was working on upgrading our cm tool or the agents that we have i'm going to talk about that if i did not have any sort of like impediments that impediments that had you know came my way while i was doing that upgrade i talk about it and if i'm done i talk about it if not then i'll tell them that hey i've done let's say about 50 or 100 assets i'm going to continue working on that till the end of the month which is normally what happens i'm going to continue working on that till the end of the month and if i have any issues i'll bring it up to the team and then we talk about it and figure it out so that's pretty much it so now now i'm going to talk about what i'm going to work on this week which is pretty much the same thing because i am working on upgrading our agent for our edr tool so kind of like talk about that and then besides that it's also you know working on tickets and all those extra stuff so you talk about that during that meeting would normally last for about an hour once i'm done with that meeting the next thing that i do is i tend to go over our edr tool and i'll see him tool to see if there's any alerts normally i would get an email but i'm not a big fan of you know checking emails all the time but i tend to check it in the mornings but then once I go over to our SIEM tool, which we use, it's called Arctic Wolf. And then I go over our EDR tool. We go through that. Once I go through that, I tend to understand, you know, kind of like what's going on there. If there's any tickets that have been raised for us to take a look at. So let's say somebody logged on from a different country it triggers that and says hey somebody logged on from a country like bosnia which is not on the authorized or whitelisted countries that people can log on from and then they, you know i i get that alert and then i go research and kind of like contact that user ha have them know that hey i received this alert where are you located normally before i do that i've actually checked the location of that ip address that it came with so if you if i ask you where are you located and you tell me hey i'm not in bosnia i'm in the united kingdom i'm like okay then why is it telling me that you're in bosnia but you're telling me in the united kingdom right so that's kind of like a bit off so then i tend to interview him a bit more till i get to the final answer as to if oh i was in bosnia two days ago i just traveled back to the united states you know sorry to the united kingdom and kind of like keep going back and forth with that to understand what's going on if it's something that has to do with any sort of like attack or whatever then we have to isolate his assets and then we research further from there so that's kind of like the process that we go through with that also most of the tickets that we actually tend to receive a lot is the dlp uh once and with dlp if anybody does not know what that means is data loss prevention and the reason why we get that a lot is because the company is a healthcare company so we have a lot of phis and stuff like that so most of the time when people send out emails they'll send out emails that has to do with people's social the address and stuff so we trigger that and then we tell the user say do you know how to encrypt you know so so and so when you're sending it out they're like oh yeah i do i'm sorry blah 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 all those stuff and you know we let it go once but then we still tend to report them to the uh, our compliance team and that compliance team will take it from there so that's kind of like normally what happens on the Monday. Monday, you know kind of like going back and forth and trust me so you realize your time is far spent and you're done for the day and you keep it going but in my field you're not really done because if you're on call though they can call you anytime and knock on wood they've never called me for anything crazy so that's something that's good so that's it on a monday so on a tuesday 
I really don't have any scheduled meetings on a Tuesday. Normally what I would do is when I come in the morning, I will schedule meetings myself with some of the team members that I have to coordinate with regards to whatever project that I'm working on to get a better understanding or if I need their help with deploying stuff. You know, I talk to them about it and then we go ahead and we do that together just to make sure that we are doing our security or taking our security very serious. So Tuesdays, I normally schedule like one or two meetings. Let's say around noon, I'm not really a big fan of meetings in the morning because meeting in the morning, I'm literally stuck in my zone, kind of like doing the work that I have to do because normally we get a lot of tickets. <laughs> Regardless, it does not matter how many times you tell people, please do encrypt your emails. They are still not going to encrypt it. So you have to do a lot of interviews with people, trying to like coach them through the process and make them understand that this is what you're supposed to do. Please do it. Please follow it. You tend to face that a lot if you're in the IT industry or in the cybersecurity industry. So we take care of that on a Tuesday, go through all those processes. And then on a Wednesday, it's about the same cadence right but then on a wednesday we go through our vulnerability tool which is uh um, tenable nessus so we go through that with the team and understand that if there's any cves that they need to include in their next patch cycle they include that either patch tuesday or patch thursdays they include that into their patch cycle and then if it's not something that's you know either uh critical they can probably push it out but if something that's critical they actually add it to the patch cycle and they patch it the next day or even the same day if it's something that's really critical we go through that and that meeting normally lasts about let's say an hour on a wednesday we go through that and that's pretty much it and then you kind of like go back to your emails check your edr tools check your cm tools or any project that you're working on you tend to work on that as well so once you're done with that then you go over to thursday Thursdays are pretty chilled as well because Thursdays we don't really have a lot of meetings, but most of the time you would have all these impromptu meetings that comes in, right? You have the CTO that would probably talk about, hey, we're trying to move into high trust, we're trying to move into, you know, HIPAA compliance, blah, 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 all those stuff, SOC 2, type 2, all those stuff, right? So you tend to have these meetings kind of like in between, not specifically on a Thursday, but in between, just for them to understand that, hey, what's going on, you know, those type of stuff. You understand these documentation and stuff like that on a Thursday. They set these up and then we tend to talk about our security policy posture you know our topology blah 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 so we put everybody on the team together normally i'm literally sitting in there and i'm just quiet listening to what you're saying taking notes because like i said i've not been in the company for a long time so i'm still trying to grasp how every single architecture works in the company so that's pretty much it how it works on a thursdays on a fridays i tend to love fridays a lot because it's not really crazy if i should say it's pretty chilled right on on fridays it's pretty chilled you don't really do a lot of stuff because fridays people tend to i don't know if it's something that's happened everywhere if it happens in your company let me know people tend to not like scheduling meetings on fridays right because fridays they tend to see it's more chilled please do not schedule meetings on fridays and i'm that type of individual that if that meeting is way too long if it goes over an hour or 45 minutes I, i'm checked out I'm like, I, I just, I just want to stop. Like, can we do this on a Monday or can we kind of like reschedule this to another day? Because after that, I'm like, if I'm just sitting in there, not really doing anything, I'm really like zoned out. I'm probably either watching something different or, you know, I have earphones in my ear. I'm listening to what you're saying, but then not really focusing because at that point in time, I'm zoned out. I like meetings that are short, sweet, straight to the point. You're done, right? I'm not a big fan of meetings that goes way above and beyond where you're literally talking about stuff that is not even making sense going on and on and on. Now, really a big fan of that but anyways hey you might probably get into a company that tends to have a lot of meetings every single day which is totally understandable right but i guess i am so lucky enough that i am in a company where we don't have a lot of meetings which is great and i tend to love it a lot so that's what we do normally on you know, fridays not a lot of meetings you're literally heads down you know doing what you have to do to make sure that you're good i remember the company that i was working with prior i think they had something that they call focus fridays so focus fridays meaning there are no meetings on fridays you should not schedule any meetings on a friday because we're focusing on whatever it is that we have to do so focus fridays no meetings you, you're in your heads down you're working and i learned there are some companies that would actually on fridays they tend to close early which is like say around three o'clock or around 3 30 or 4. let me know if you work for a company that does that because I would love to be in a company like that. <laughs> I would love to be in a company like that. And I heard that actually they're actually having to implement something in the workday where you work 12 hours Monday through Thursday and you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. I think that would be great. But let me know what you think in the comment section. So basically, that's what I do on a Monday through Friday. It's not as tedious as I'm saying it. Like you're listening to me, you probably would say, hey, I mean, this is not tedious. It's pretty easy. But once you you know get your foot through the door and you're actually doing the work yes sometimes you have a pretty chill day and sometimes it's 
it's out there. <laughs> Sometimes it gets crazy because you might probably be doing some patches or be doing some upgrades and then it's not going the way you want it to go. So that becomes a bit difficult for you as an individual if you try to do all this. But I totally do understand why sometimes it has its ups and downs because it's technology, right? Technology sometimes is not going to go as smooth as you want it to go. So which is totally understandable. Okay. But yeah, from a Monday through Friday, let's say if you ask what you do, it's normally literally just going through emails, checking your EDR, checking your CM tools, going through those meetings, giving your updates as to what you do for people to understand that this is the project that you worked on the week prior. This is the project you're going to work on this week. So they get a general understanding of it. And also any sort of like impromptu stuff that comes up, you kind of like take it up and then work up on it with your team to understand. And one advice that I got when I was getting into the IT industry is please, please, and please try to document every single process that you have. My company, we do that a lot. And I love that about my company because every single thing that you're trying to find a process of, unless it's something that we've not done at the company before, but if it is something that we've done at the company before, we go to Confluence and it would be there. We have a step-by-step -step process. We take documentation very serious. So we document every single thing on Confluence. So if you're a newbie, please put this under your belt, document every single thing because you don't have to remember everything. You don't have to be a genius and try to remember everything that, oh, I did this two years ago. I remember this is what I did. No, just go to Confluence and then go through the process. It's as easy as that, right? Or if you did it two years ago, just try to compare your notes with whatever the company that or whatever tool that you're trying to upgrade to right the newest version try to see if there's any changes that have done to it and then follow and update your confluence document and keep it going from there you do not have to know every single thing off of the top of your head you you can't even do that okay please try to document every single thing like your command line prompts all those stuff just document it it would make it a lot easier for you because once you tend to practice it a lot it becomes muscle memory okay i do hope that i gave you some great gems today till i see you again guys please stay blessed be be blessed and God bless. Peace.